Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of decay of fresh milk by measuring the pH change. And this is for triple biology students only. Now this is a required practical so it's important that you learn the details. Ok I'm showing you here a glass of milk. Now as you know if milk is left at room temperature then after a couple of days it goes sour. And that's because bacteria in the milk start the decay process. These bacteria use enzymes to produce acidic molecules, and that's why sour milk tastes acidic. So in this practical we're going to investigate the effect of temperature on the decay of milk. Now there is a problem here. Decay is a very slow process, so it's very hard to observe that in a lesson. So to get around that problem we're going to model decay by using the enzyme lipase. So what we'll be looking at is not strictly decay, but it should give results that approximate to what we would see with decay. Ok so we start by labelling a test tube lipase. We then use a pipette to place 5 cm cubed of lipase solution into the test tube. We now label another test tube milk and add 5 drops of the indicator cresol red. We now add 5 cm cubed of milk and 7 cm cubed of sodium carbonate solution to the milk test tube. Now at this point the solution should be purple and that's because sodium carbonate solution is alkaline and cresol red is purple in alkaline conditions. Ok now at this point we place a thermometer into the test tube containing the milk. Now we place both the test tubes into a beaker of water at our first chosen temperature. We'll start with 20 degrees celsius which is around room temperature. At this point we need to wait until the temperature of our solutions is the same as the water in the beaker. Now we use a pipette to transfer 1 cm cubed of lipase solution to the test tube containing milk and we stir the solution. At the same time we start a timer. At this point the enzyme lipase will start to break down fat molecules in the milk. This releases fatty acids and this causes the milk solution to become acidic. In acidic conditions the indicator cresol red changes to yellow. So once the solution turns yellow we stop timing and record the results. Now we need to repeat the experiment at a range of different temperatures. So as you can see the independent variable in this experiment is the temperature. The dependent variable is the time taken for the milk solution to turn yellow. The control variables are the volumes of the different solutions. We need to make sure that the volumes of lipase, milk, sodium carbonate solution and cresol red do not change. Now there are a couple of important points about this practical. Firstly it's very important that we use a clean test tube for the milk solution for each experiment. That's because any traces of lipase from the previous experiment will trigger the reaction before we're ready. And secondly because we're looking for a change of colour it can be difficult to decide the exact point to stop the timer. We can reduce the effect of this by sharing data with other groups and calculating a mean. At the end of the experiment we can plot a graph of our results and I'm showing you a typical graph here. As you can see at low temperatures the reaction is slow. That's because enzymes work slowly at lower temperatures. At a certain temperature the reaction is taking place at its fastest rate and scientists call this the optimum temperature. However in conditions which are warmer than the optimum temperature the reaction slows down and it might even stop completely. And that's because the enzyme denatures at higher temperatures. Now in terms of decay, decomposing microorganisms work faster in warm conditions but not in hot conditions and as we've seen this is because their enzymes denature when the temperature is too high. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in our revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.